hello everyone so today in today's video i am going to uh, tell you about the tubercular meningitis so tubercular meningitis means it is due to the tb so in this the tubercular meningitis we have to remember one thing that it occurs in the age of the children that is a six months to four year old child this disease can occur that is tubercular meningitis now it is uh, we have to remember one more thing that it is always associated with the pulmonary tb so tubercular meningitis is always associated with the pulmonary tuberculosis now how uh, from the lungs how it reached to the meningitis meningitis means there is inflammation of the meninges of the brain so it means how it reached from the lungs to the brain so we have to remember that from the lungs to the brain it reached means it spread by the hematogenous root so which root it will take it will spread by the hematogenous root now what is the pathogenesis of the tubercular meningitis so for the pathogenesis suppose this one is the primary focus in the lungs which reaches to the meninges uh, of the brain by the hematogenous spread means by the hematogenous root it reached to the brain now as this primary focus reach the brain by hematogenous spread then there what will they do so after reaching to the brain they these foci then rupture into the subarachnoid space as they rupture into the subarachnoid space they form the basal exudate which is also known as the gelatinous exudate which is also known as a gelatinous exudates now in the gelatinous exudate means they filter the uh, they infiltrate they enter into the meningeal blood vessels so these exudates interfere with the normal csf flow at the level of basal cisterna so we have to remember that where these gelatinous exudate will interfere so these will interfere the uh, at the level of basal cisterna so this is a previous year question that at the at what level uh, it interfere so basal exudate will interfere at the level of basal cisterna now the next one the how many types of the tubercular meningitis so for the classification of neurotuberculosis we have two types first one is the intracranial and the second one is the spinal type while in the intracranial neuro, uh, neurotuberculosis we have like tb meningitis tb encephalopathy tuberculoma here oma is there so it means that it is a benign uh, condition of the cancer so tuberculoma and the tubercular brain abscess there is formation of a abscess abscess is a new cavity formation now the second form that is the spinal form when the tb spread to the spinal part that is known as the port spine please remember that is the port spine in which the upper limb and lower limb ratio is uh, decrease so the person is also known as the short trunk dwarfism short trunk dwarfism now in we have some more conditions in which we see the short trunk dwarfism first one is the this uh, tuberculosis tubercular meningitis the second one is the spondylo uh, spondylo epiphyseal dysplasia and the third one is the kyphoscoliosis and the fourth one that is a algele syndrome algele syndrome and the noonan syndrome both are congenital heart defects in which we see the pulmonary stenosis is the most common so for here uh, the purpose in the tubercular uh, meningitis we have to remember these four conditions in which we see the short trunk dwarfism in which the upper limb and lower limb ratio will decrease so which type of hydrocephalus will occur in the tubercular meningitis so in this we have communicating hydrocephalus we have communicating hydrocephalus communicating we have one is the communicating hydrocephalus and the other term is the non-communicating so what is the difference between communicating and non-communicating so here we have to remember for the communicating means that is the non obstructive type while well, for the non communicating that is the obstructive type please remember n is not for n means no non obstructive is not for non communicating it is for communicating so non obstructive means this n is not for this n so for communicating we have non obstructive and for non communicating hydrosphalus we have obstructive type means in the communicating hydrosphalus when there is a uh, hydrosphalus hydro means water water means there is uh, more water increased water in the brain then all the four ventricles will get dilated while in the non communicating only the 
only the lateral and third ventricle will get dilated because it is a obstructive type and as we all know the third ventricle will connect to the fourth ventricle by the ductus sylvius so means uh, if there is dilation of only third ventricle and lateral ventricle it means that there is obstruction at the level between third and fourth ventricle that is the ductus sylvius there is obstruction so that is the non communicating hydrocephalus now we have some points that like in the uh, which type of stages we will see so in the hepatic encephalopathy encephalopathy we always used to see westerhaven classification which have four stages well in the celiac disease there is marsh oberhuber classification will be there and for the tubercular meningitis we have three stages please remember in the tbm we have three stages and in the hepatic encephalopathy we have the four stages and the name is the western heaven classification now what were those tubercular meningitis stages so in the stage one what we will see the person the child has fever plus headache is there and there is photophobia and loss of appetite is seen well in the stage two and three we mostly used to see the meningeal signs and in particular in the stage two we see the kernic signs Sign and Brzezinski sign. As in the Kernig sign, there is stiffness in hamstring muscles. That is, semi, uh, what were the hamstring muscles? So, in the hamstring muscles, it include like biceps, femoris, semitendinous, semimembranous, and abductor magnus. Please remember, it is abductor magnus. Well, for the Brzezinski sign, is also seen in the second stage. So, for the second stage, we have to remember we we are uh, we have meningeal signs like Kernig sign and Brzezinski sign is stage two. Plus, in the stage 2, we have seizures plus neurological deficit will be there. Like sometimes hemiplegia will be there. And those signs, Kernick and Brzezinski sign. Well, in, for the stage 3, there is de uh, decorticate rigidity and decerebrate uh, rigidity. For decorticate rigidity, in which we see the abnormal flexion of the hands. So, upper limb abnormal flexions will be there. While in the decerebrate, there is extension will be there. So this is, is uh, this will occur in the stage three. So for the purpose of stages, we have to remember in the stage one we are seeing fever and headache. Well, in the stage two we are seeing the signs that is Brzezinski cunning sign. In the stage three we have rigidity that is decorticate rigidity and decerebrate rigidity. Now we have one more note that is the uh, like the child have iris dilator muscles which were immature means the in the newborn child we always used to see constricted uh, iris but because there is immature uh, iris dilator muscles there is the dilator muscles were immature so we are not going to seem seeing them dilated so the in the newborn child we have pupil constructed so whenever we have to dilate their eyes what we have to do we have to dilate the pupil in one condition and that condition is retinopathy of prematurity so in the retinopathy of prematurity we have to dilate the eyes of the newborn otherwise the in newborn the iris dilator muscles were immature so they are not dilated so at what stage or uh, at what time in the retinopathy of prematurity there is screening so screening is done at 32 weeks of gestation that is four weeks post natal we have to do screening now what is the diagnosis of the tbm for the diagnosis of tbm we have to do lumbar puncture and we have to check in the lumbar puncture we have to check that sugar will decrease protein will increase and lymphocytic predominant condition it will be there now we have to remember uh, the note that is the what is the normal so in normal csf color is transparent and the pressure is normal we have to remember this the csf color is transparent normally while for this the uh, sugar in decrease protein will increase the appearance of cobweb sorry the appearance of cobweb formation is indicative of what so the appearance of when there is appearance of cobweb web formation it is indicative of tubercular meningitis it is indicative of tubercular meningitis now what is the treatment for the tpm for the treatment we have to give the anti-tubercular therapy that is for given 12 months and as we all know in the uh, uh, and att therapy that is hrzds so s stands for isoniazid rifampicin streptomycin ethambutol and pyrazinamide and this we have to give now we have we also have to give steroids because steroids reduces the inflammation 
सो इन स्टेरॉइड्स बेसिकली वी गिव डेक्सा मिथासोन दैट इज पॉइंट वन फाइव मिलीग्राम पर के जी पर डोज दैट इज सिक्स आवरली फॉलोड बाई टैबलेट प्रेगनीसोलोन फॉर द सिक्स वीक्स सो दिस ट्रीटमेंट वी हैव टू गिव दैट इज एन ए टी टी एंड स्टेरॉइड्स नाउ फॉर द पलमोनरी टी बी द ट्रीटमेंट इज फॉर सिक्स मंथ लाइक इंटेंसिव एंड कंटिन्यूस फेज इन इंटेंसिव फेज वी हैव टू गिव दिस एच आर जेडी एस फॉर टू मंथ एंड प्लस इन द कंटिन्यूस फेज वी हैव टू गिव फॉर फोर मंथ दैट इज एच आर नाउ दैट्स ऑल फॉर द टी पी एम आई होप दिस वीडियो विल बेनिफिट यू थैंक यू बाय